Hi everyone, it's Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer. And today we have a really interesting topic that is saying to all of us, climb into the heart and be the authentic person you came here to be. Yes, we all want to be successful. But no, we do not have to imitate someone else. Now, when I first started in this work, and actually throughout my entire life, whenever I started something new, I always was looking for somebody who was my mentor, who I was going to imitate as I learned more about whatever it was. There was somebody that was more successful. There was someone who seemed to know more, someone who was at ease doing what I wanted to do. And yes, I did a lot of imitating. Now, it didn't become much of a problem for me because I am naturally an out-of-the-box thinker and I am constantly improving the way that I look at things. I don't particularly like to just leave things the way they are. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's gotten me into trouble. But I would work with someone, take their classes, read their books, uh, you know, follow their program and their protocol for a period of time until I felt like I understood what they were doing. And then I immediately started adopting my own methods things that felt better to me. So without even realizing it, I had shifted into more of my authentic self. And that's what I want you to really get from today's conversation. You already came with everything you need to be successful. It is absolutely wonderful to model yourself after someone else in the beginning as long as you recognize how incredibly perfect you are for whatever it is that you've chosen to do and that you honor what you have brought. You are an original and you can never be the perfect copy. There are, is no such thing as a perfect copy. We are all originals and I want your originality to shine. So if somebody says to you, because they see that you're sort of going off and doing your own thing and you're not doing it the way they showed you, now, of course, the angels are telling me, except when it comes to math and they are laying a foundation. I was never great at math. Maybe that was my problem. <laughs> I never understood the language and had no relationship with it. And I was trying to develop a relationship with something I didn't understand and it didn't work. So maybe now if I go back and look at math and get that foundation, I would be able to do that. But wonderful point that the angels brought forward for us. You have to have a relationship with whatever it is that you're wanting to expand beyond. And of course, when we talk about healing our hearts, it is all about the relationship you have with yourself. That's our starting point. Then we can branch out into other relationships. But until we focus on how we are doing with ourselves, we're not going to get any further. So let's see what the how our guides have chosen to address this. And if someone says to you, well, you're not copying it exactly the way I showed you, I want you to say to them, I'm not broken. I'm pursuing my own path. Please do not allow people to insist that you do it as they want you to do it. Once you learn the fundamentals, once you know what you're doing and you have a foundation. You can bring in you. 
you do need the foundation. That is important. Otherwise, uh, you won't have anything to build on. But once you have that foundation, be you. So, now we're looking at, I want to be successful. Should I imitate someone who's already successful? So it's what's our relationship with success? And they begin. United Hearts, we beg you to stop. Now, I, before we go on, look at the introduction and, the, and how much they have changed it. Generally, it is dear ones or dear hearts. They want us to see that United Hearts can still be separate individuals in their expression. We can be united for a cause. We are all part of one body. But we can bring our separate expressions just like we bring our physical bodies to the party. We can still bring our separate energetic signature and our gift without damaging the whole. The way we enhance the whole is to bring our gift over and over and over again. So beginning again, <clears throat> United Hearts, <clears throat> excuse me, we beg you to stop. You do not need, nor do you want to be more like someone else. It matters not how advanced, successful, or talented that someone is. The only thing you need to understand is you are not them, they are not you, and in your quest to become more, when you imitate another, you become less. Now, always I guarantee you when we start out imitating or copying someone else, it is because we're feeling some sort of inadequacy or we're having some great desire to learn something that we feel will make us more than we currently are. It's okay to begin there. However, if you are well-versed in the subject matter and you are still trying to imitate, you are damaging yourself, not helping yourself. And anything you do to you, we know, affects the rest of the world, the rest of the consciousness that you are joined to. So please, Honor your own gift. The energy being brought forth now is demanding your best. It's asking, begging, and insisting that you do not play small. Of course you have a choice. Of course you can choose to run, to hide, to be in fear. But then you will reap the consequences of that choice. The gift you brought to share will wither. Your life will be filled with dissatisfaction and disappointment, and you will live in a state of heartache. Not a state of heartbreak, for you may have love-based relationships, but a start state of heartache, for your soul will long for what you could have transformed into. You can tell yourself, I am nothing. I'm worthless. I'm no good. You can keep up that agony. But your soul knows the truth. And so therefore, some part of you, even though it may be buried under layers, knows the truth. So you will never experience true happiness until you are willing to acknowledge Step into and magnify your gift in your own life. Other, another way to say that is stepping into your purpose. Each one of you have brought your specific elements of greatness. And until you accept that aspect of yourself and do the work necessary to bring that aspect of greatness forward in yourself, your soul... You will always yearn for more. You'll feel unsettled, incomplete, and unhappy at the deepest level. 
even though your surface level appears to be happy and satisfied. So you can try to fool yourself and you will be successful for a certain period of time. But we have now entered energy that is saying no more playing, no more pretending, no more I'm not good enough. So it really serves your highest good and causes you the least amount of difficulty to say, I am magnificent and I am now giving myself permission to step into all that I am, to claim it for myself and then to share it with others who are willing to receive. Therefore, we implore you to be true to your mission to your soul soul calling and to the heart urges that guide you toward projects and people that cause you to stretch beyond your current comfort zone. Let's look at what happens on the energetic and physical levels when you accept your authentic self and stop trying to imitate another, no matter how magnificent their expression of themselves may be. So we're not saying, please understand, we're not saying that other person is not doing a great job at being themselves. They may be doing magnificently. I'm sure that they are if you wanted to imitate them. However, they're not you. And that is not the highest expression of yourself. So what do you get when you begin expressing your authentic self, first you'll experience freedom. When you respectfully choose to honor who you are and you give permission for all negative attachments to drop away. Think about that. We often cut the cords with Archangel Michael. But when you respectfully choose to honor who you are, those negative attachments will drop away. When you're trying to be someone you're not, you're motivated by a lower desire. Now, hear this. This is very, very important. No matter what you're saying to yourself about why or how you're trying to justify it, there will always be a lower energy at play when you're imitating another's behavior. You have a certain learning period where you need to imitate and model your behavior after theirs. If you continue past that incubator stage and you don't grow, you are causing yourself a problem and you are forcing yourself to stay in a low vibration. Perhaps you lust after their life, fame, or talent. Perhaps you feel you have no special gift. You've deemed yourself worthless, so you believe the only way to be anyone is to imitate, to copy what they do and say, since they have the success you desire. No matter the source, from jealousy to feeling incapable, a lower energy is always directing thoughts about comparing, imitating, or even competing. We don't have time for those lower energies anymore. We are in the era of responsibility and cooperation. Please do not be fooled by any energy that says you're not good enough, but if you just follow this other person, you'll be acceptable. Learn from them and develop your own style. We want you and your soul. We want you and your soul also wants to be better than you were yesterday, but not better than someone else, better than you. Each one of you came here to experience what you needed for optimal personal growth, not what someone else needed that you could try to copy. Be your best, absolutely, but be a better you and not a poor copy of someone else. When you imitate, you are not tapping into your original and creative space. You're mimicking what feels good to someone else. However, 
Growth happens when you experiment with what feels best to you. Your path may be a straight climb to the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your neighbor's path may include a dive to the bottom before heading back up. That was certainly my path. It wasn't straight up to the top. It was a dive and <clears throat> spend some time in the mud and dive a little deeper and climb up a little higher and dive back down. Hopefully no one has followed my path out of imitation. And so I'll find it wasn't that. It was perfect for me, but it wasn't a whole lot of fun. Looking back, I would not trade a moment of it <clears throat> if every single one of those moments were necessary to bring me to where I am today. But I certainly don't advocate that other people go on the same journey that I went on. Learn more quickly. If you're allowing yourself to be the highest and best expression of yourself, then you'll allow your journey to unfold in a way that feels best to you. You'll be willing to explore the dark corners of yourself, and you'll be open to loving it all, learning from it all, and sharing your knowledge with the all that is. If each one of you tried to imitate the other one, there would be no new being discovered, and the grand journey to which you have been called would grind to a halt. It would grow stale and stagnant, in desperate need of fresh, creative ideas that would stimulate growth and encourage expansion. Therefore, you receive first your personal freedom when you willingly and daringly Allow yourself to be yourself. Let me just get a drink of water. Second, <clears throat> you become more loving and accepting when that which is truly your expression of yourself is given permission to shine forth brightly. Be two years old for a moment. Think about experiencing that new concept of, gee, I have some mobility, I have speech, I have a little bit of independence. I'm going to push that independence as far as I can. And then someone tells you, no. Oh, you get so angry, you throw a tantrum. All you're trying to do is express yourself and share who you are, and it doesn't feel good to be stifled. Now, generally, when you're two, your choices are not of the highest order. You may be looking to get yourself into quite a bit of trouble. And the no is so that you are safe. You're not two anymore. And you're still stifling who you really are. Allow who you are to shine forth with the wisdom of, of, your, of the knowledge that you have gained. Unconditional love means accepting every part of yourself and others without judgment or criticism. It does not demand that you like, want to remain the same, or even accept character, character traits or habits that are detrimental, but it does allow you to love and accept every part of yourself as it is now and as you transform it into the highest expression of itself. So, you take the lower parts of yourself and you say, I see you. I welcome you. I love you. Just as you are. Because the minute you start judging pointing fingers, blaming and shaming, you're going to solidify those bad habits and that bad attitude. Once you've established that I love you, it's okay for you to exist, now you'll feel your entire body taking a sigh of relief. Oh, I'm okay. 
You're not going to judge me. You're not going to shun me, blame me, or make me feel bad. Well, maybe I don't need to express myself in this way anymore. Our natural desire is to grow. These habits that we're afraid of are feelings of shame and fear. When you're not afraid and when no one is making you feel ashamed, you don't need those expressions, those habits anymore. You can evolve to the next highest level. In other words, you're giving yourself the freedom to love yourself on every level. And once you feel loved and accepted as you are, it becomes easy to let go of any aspect of yourself that's not serving you. When you feel accepted, when you are free to make whatever choice you want to make, then you will automatically make the best choice, the highest choice, because the need to rebel has been eradicated. If you're free and loved, there's nothing to rebel against, so you evolve into the next highest expression of your authentic self. Nobody's making you feel bad. You can be who you want to be and feel good. The third resource you gain when you stop imitating, copying, and comparing yourself to others is a sense of self. You become aware of your individuality, of your own sense of style, of the expression that makes you feel the best, the most comfortable, and the most relaxed. Huge word. Tiny but huge. When you are in a deep state of relaxation, because you're allowing yourself to be the highest expression of yourself, then you automatically flow. When you're in resistance, everything is tight. You may even feel your muscles tensing up. It's as though you are frozen. When you are relaxed, It's as though you've melted and you can flow. You're in the right place at the right time and you begin seeing the synchronicities in life instead of the disconnects. Remember, it's all in the way we are choosing to view what we are seeing. If we are priming ourselves to see only what's wrong, we will make sure we are always off by a little bit, five minutes late, five minutes early, wrong corner, whatever it's going to be. When we are flowing, we will speed up or slow down to be whatever we need to be. In other words, you become much more miracle conscious, much more attuned to the natural realm and much more able to navigate within the physical body. The challenges that you set for yourself for this life journey become seamless flow to the big picture, which is easily imagined and understood. Again, go back in time. Go back to leaving high school. You're excited. You feel like for the first time in your life, you're an adult. You suddenly have privileges that you couldn't have because you weren't old enough but you're also scared and everything feels a little overwhelming. You hope you're going to get it right. Part of you is sure. After all, you graduated from high school. You're an adult, but you may not be seeing things clearly unless you're flowing. If you have learned to flow, If you have learned communication with the divine that early on in your life and you are really applying it in your life, you'll see that big picture. And you won't have the trial and errors that the rest of us went through trying to figure out who am I. You will probably, probably flow right into it unless 
it is necessary for your journey that you spend some time confused. And then you will. But that confusion will, of course, benefit the greater purpose. At the same time that you're undergoing this profound period of flow, you're also contributing a sense of joy and rightness into the collective consciousness of which all are a part and all are continuously contributing. When you upload feelings of fear, anger, and resentment, the energetic body recoils and regresses. This got my attention so much because I could just feel it for all of the years that I spent in fear, in anger, in frustration, in resentment. I realized, wow, I was pulling away and others were pulling away from me because I was not a lot of fun to be around at that time. And it felt like I was damaged goods. I was putting out a lot of fear. And who wants to keep company with fear? When you upload freedom, love, joy, renewal, and relaxation, the energetic body exhales and expands, eager to experience more growth and opportunities for expression. Therefore, your choice impacts you as well as the whole. When you try to be someone you're not, no matter how successful that someone may be, you're depriving yourself of your own greatness and the whole of your unique gift. So I have to say, now that I am uploading love, joy, peace, flow, I honestly cannot remember a time when I have not encountered loving people. Every once in a while, somebody's having a tough day. And I send them a blanket of pink and gold light, cover them with love. But for the most part, my exchanges with people now are loving, helpful, kind, uplifting, because I changed what I was offering. You came forth to be an original masterpiece and not a poor copy, but you can only be a true expression of yourself when you willingly and enthusiastically embrace all of who you are as you hold nothing back, hide no aspect, and do not try to flee. Stop running from the dark parts of yourself. Take them out. Take a look at them. The place to take them out from, of course, is the heart. That's where they're hiding. Take them out from the heart. <clears throat> Hold them in your hands. Cradle that, that aspect of you that feels dark and, and unsupported. Hold it in your hands. Take a look at it. And honor it. Show it some compassion. Say, I get it. You were created when I was afraid and didn't know any better. You came to protect me, teach me, guide me. Thank you for being here. I'm ready to allow you to evolve into your next highest expression of yourself. So I'm giving you your freedom and your blessing. You're free to go to support me in love in any way that is for my highest good. Do not fear the dark. Bring it into your hands. Look at it and love it away. Love is so much more powerful than the dark could ever be. Be the loving spirit you came here to be by giving yourself the freedom unconditional love and expression of your true self that is needed for you to blossom into the authentic self that's waiting to be brought forth. 
There are so many beautiful aspects of yourself that you not allowed to be exposed. It's safe. It's time. Bring them forth. Now let's just take a look. <clears throat> Sorry, I am so, I don't know, allergy today or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's hot. That's all I can say. <sighs> uh, let's take a look at what they've shared with us about being successful. I want each one of you to be incredibly successful in your lives. But please, don't be like anyone other than yourself. We are entering the time of united hearts. It's a time of unity and support for self that acknowledges and supports others. None of us are ever going to be able to do this on our own. None of us are ever going to get it right just by ourselves. We need each other. We need the communion, the commitment, the interaction. This is an unprecedented time of growth. And whenever we're entering a, a new space or a new time, things feel awkward and some things feel exhilarating. So that's when we can support each other best by being each other's cheerleaders. Each spirit has taken on physical form and is, in, and is in this world with us is absolutely precious and necessary and they need to be honored, even the dark ones. Now, I know we don't usually talk about people who have chosen not to be loving, but let's beginning, begin loving those people who have committed to a very dark life this time. I don't know whether sharing a blanket of pink and gold light of unconditional love will help them. Perhaps they have closed that part of them off and they don't want to receive that. It's not going to hurt them and it won't interfere with their path. But it will certainly help anyone who is near who is open to receiving, and it builds the collective conscious feeling of love. So don't worry that that particular person won't receive from you. Share anyway, because you don't know who it is that you are going to affect. And we don't know if that seed that you planted, that little moment of love that you gave, will blossom at some point later on. So, doesn't mean that we invite dark energies into our inner circle. You are still protective of your own energy. I want you to be really clear on that. If someone has proven over and over and over again, they cannot be trusted and you keep trusting them, not going to say any more. Just think about that. It's not their fault. They've already advertised, broadcast, shown you who they are. Now, you have to have enough love of self to say, I choose not to be in a relationship with someone who shows that they are not willing to be trustworthy. That doesn't make me feel good, honored, loved, respected, whatever. Unless it does. If it does, then that's your lesson and you've chosen it and now you don't get to have a pity party over it. You get to learn and grow. Now, back to imitation. Imitation. Copying someone else's behavior, their attitude, their method of doing something keeps you small. Once you've learned, I remember hearing the woman who in, uh, brought into the world Reiki. 
And she said, I certainly hope that none of my students come back to me a year after they have learned the principles of Reiki and say to me, I am continuing to do it just as you taught me. She expected all of her students to go beyond what was taught and to develop their own style, to make it their own. Let's remember what she has said and apply it to every area of our lives. Make what you are learning your own. Because playing small comes with the price tag of dissatisfaction. So if you are looking at your life and saying, man, I really don't like my life. Don't start looking around for who or what you can blame. Go into the heart and say, what's going on here? Am I being my authentic self? Am I hiding? Is fear in control or love? What do I need to do so that I can feel happy about my life? I guarantee you, it will not be go sit in a corner and pretend you're no one and nothing. If that's the message that you get, please contact me. We need to do a lot of work together. We also play small when we're feeling frightened, overwhelmed, anxious. So if any of you are receiving the message that you are to go sit in a corner because you are no one and nothing and you should be satisfied with that. I'm serious. I offer a 30-minute complimentary consultation. I can help you find where that is coming from. And then you can choose to do the work on your own or do the work with me. But that is not acceptable. No one has come here to sit in the corner. Remember, if you brought the gift, and you have, no one is here without a gift. If you have brought the gift, you have brought everything you need to fulfill it. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. It means that you have the natural talent so that when you begin studying the gift, you will be able to develop it to its fullest. No one ever got away with being a champion right from the start. There's no point in coming into this life if you have it all done already. This is the area of growth, the planet of growth, the experience of growth. So no matter how good you may be at something, whatever natural talent you may have brought, you are still going to need to spend time developing that natural talent. Take a look at any of the athletes. Usually their stories are quite well known. And you will notice, yes, they had a natural talent from the beginning as children. They were very good at whatever it was or prodigies, but then if you were to read their biography, you would see that they studied, practiced, uh, rehearsed, whatever it is, 10, 12 hours a day. They did not just say, oh, look, I'm good at this. They were obsessed with whatever it was And they kept working at it and learning more about it so they could become the champion that they are known for today. None of them got to sit home and watch TV on their couch and then get up and go and be the greatest player on the field. Every single one of them put in the time necessary to develop the gift that they had brought to its fullest. Otherwise, they did not become a champion. So you have to do the refining work, but you will have the ability. The gift is having the innate ability, but the ability still has to be developed. So there's a little bit of a difference there. People get caught up on, I don't think I have a gift, 
because I have to work at whatever it is. Yes, you do. And so does everybody else. Doesn't mean you don't have a gift. It just means you're not understanding that the no gift, no one ever comes with the gift fully developed because this is a, the whole purpose of coming to earth is to grow. Okay. So if you're dissatisfied, it can be an easy, easy fix. You don't have to say, oh, no, I'm broken. Go within, go into the heart, honor who you are, and then commit to being more. Maybe you've gotten a little bit lazy. Maybe you have stopped pushing and you're feeling a little dissatisfaction because you know you're supposed to be more. Stretch beyond your comfort zone. Because remember, here's what happens when you accept your authentic self. First, you get that incredible, glorious sense of freedom. Oh, my gosh. I feel great. This is me. This is who I get to be. I love this. Then negative attachments begin dropping away. As you rise higher, as you shine brighter, those people that are content to be in the lower registers, the lower vibrations, cannot hold on to you. They don't want to be around you. You vibrated out of their reach. So they begin dropping away or pushing you away. The lower desire of who you are isn't good enough for you anymore. So you must, and this is where we sometimes get into trouble. Sometimes we say, well, I've got to copy this one that's more successful. But instead of staying there, we must say to ourselves, but I am more than enough. And I love and accept myself. Now you can go and imitate someone or learn from them and get the basics. But you must keep saying to yourself, I, me, just as I am, I am more than enough. And I gave myself permission to expand beyond what I'm learning, to add my personal signature to it. Because when we address life from the high vibration of love, joy, and peace, then we're in optimal growth. That is just, you're really going to feel your best. And second thing they shared with us is more love and acceptance. When we try to correct our behavior through blame and shame, we end up holding on to that behavior for dear life. It, we are wedded to that behavior. Have you noticed the minute you tell yourself, I'm going to stop blank. I'm going to lose blank amount of pounds. I'm going to, you are phrasing it as though whatever you are doing is blameworthy should be shamed and is not acceptable. And the minute you say some part of you is not acceptable, the more you want to justify and say why it is. So why don't you just say, I think I would feel better if I was no longer doing this particular behavior. I'm going to see what it's like not to participate in that and see if the, how that makes me feel. I can always change my mind. I can change my mind and go back to eating ice cream for dinner every night for the next year. But just for this day, start with a day. Start with one meal if it's weight loss. Just for this one meal, I'm going to see what it feels like if I eat something that is healthy. I just, I'm going to experiment. There's no blame. There's no shame. There's just curiosity. As opposed to, oh, I look so fat. Oh, my gosh. What was I thinking? How am I ever going to get this weight off? I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. All right, now I just want six bowls of ice cream for dinner. 
Love yourself through it. Love and acceptance of what is makes change for the better easier and more fun. No one has ever had fun when they're telling themselves, you can't do that. No, no, no. But you can say to yourself, I'd rather do this and feel a heck of a lot better about it. The last thing that we gain when we really step into our authentic self and say yes to being successful is coming home to yourself, recognizing what feels best, who you need to be in order to flow. We can't just be nothing. That's impossible. We're always going to be something. So you got to decide, well, who do I need to be in order to feel my best? to line up with the synchronicities of life because I'm in a state of allowing as opposed to always being too early or too late. And also it enables you to become miracle conscious. Suddenly you are looking around and seeing 1111 or butterflies in a color that you've never seen before these are all things that had happened on my walk this morning. Um, getting ready for this call. Look up. It's 11:11. I'm out on my walk. I'm seeing these incredible butterflies and beautiful sunflowers in this color that I've, I've read that I've never seen before. And just a feeling of elation. That's when you know that you are flowing as opposed to forcing. Those butterflies that are always existed, the time will at some point, at two times during the day, always be 11-11. And that red sunflower, I'm sure, grows in other gardens. However, because I was aware and allowing I got to see all of these things and experience them. I was open to miracle consciousness. And that life journey that all of us are on, when we're truly being our authentic self, it remains challenging. We are here to grow. But it begins to feel effortless. Even when the challenge is in front of you, you don't feel like you don't have the tools, you don't have the energy, you don't have the intelligence, you don't have the the guidance or the help. You just feel like, okay, here's a challenge. I am absolutely certain I'll be able to navigate this successfully. And you move forward one step at a time with the guidance that you need. Because that's the way it works when you are flowing as your authentic self. You take your part in the universal dance and realize you're the only one that can perform those particular dance steps. There may be millions of doctors in the world. We didn't come to be something that no one else can be similar to. But there is only one doctor that has your particular knowledge, personality, skill set, and wisdom. And that's you. So I don't care how many doctors are in the world, teachers, nurses, lawyers, whatever you may choose to be. It doesn't matter that other people are doing a similar job. It matters that you do the job in the way that only you can do it. Your decision to enter the physical came with a sticker of authenticity. You didn't come with a stamp that said copy. You came with your own sticker of authenticity. You came forth to become an original masterpiece and not a poor copy. Give your genius to the collective consciousness of which we are all a part. 
we all grow when we are uploading wisdom to the collective consciousness. We don't all need to have the same experiences. When we are graciously and generously uploading our knowledge into the collective consciousness, every single one of us grows. But only one of us can unlock that particular information because that's what we came to share. That's how important you are. No one can take your place. And if you don't get it right in this life, if you completely miss out, you will have an opportunity to come again and offer what you know again. Or perhaps you will sanction another person to do that work for you. I don't know. I have to ask them about that. But I am figure it will probably be, okay, you came with something that only you can offer and you decided not to offer it. And you will probably be offered another opportunity to come back and bring that forward. And you would be offered again and again and again and again. And until you say yes, that little part, that little something that you brought may be missing or may not be polished as much as it could be. So please, no imitating. Get the foundation from someone and then expand. And I'm going to share with you. But first, I have a story, as always. But first, any questions from anyone? Star two, I got to share a story with you, but this keeps coming in and it has been coming in since I channeled this blog post. Remember those bracelets. There was a period when we were just stepping into this shift mentality and this consciousness raising that we've all been exposed to and really wanting to to get into that vibration of love, joy and peace. And it became very popular to wear and to ask, wear the bracelet and to ask people, the WWJD, what would Jesus do? And at the time I thought, oh, isn't that great? People are being reminded of what they should be doing. You know, we're kind of reminding ourselves that Jesus was really about love. But then I would notice that it would become kind of judgmental. And after I wrote this, and they kept saying to me, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? I was realizing, okay, they were giving me the opportunity again to imitate. Now, in this particular case, when we're imitating Jesus, you would think, hey, you can't get any better than that. They were still testing. Are you going to be you? You have access to Jesus, to that unconditional love, to that information, to that wisdom. Or are you going to hide your light and just run after the light that was Jesus and try to be someone you can never be? Jesus was a master, no doubt about it. He showed us so much incredible truth. He brought so much guidance into the world. But he never once said, leave your brain behind and do exactly what I do. He told us, this and greater things you can do. He didn't say, try to be me. Don't develop your own gift. Just try to resurrect mine. Be an original you. You are connected to source through the heart. Get into the heart. Connect with source and allow that guidance to help you unfold into the beautiful being you came here to be. Now, I have to share a story with you. My son has been incredibly loving and he got blue apron for us you know, the uh, meals that come perfectly proportioned with recipes as a little surprise because we're both working long hours and sometimes 
dinner is not a top priority. And I had been saying, oh, I'm so bored with what I'm cooking and I really don't have the time to go looking up another recipe. I'm happily challenged by the work that I'm doing. And um, yet time is at a premium. There isn't a whole lot of downtime to spend looking at recipes. So we tried this Blue Apron. Well, I'm reading their recipe and immediately I can feel myself rebelling. First I say, oh yes, this is lovely because I do love order. I like things that go in order. So I was always good about coloring in the lines because it looked neat and orderly. But then I would always get dissatisfied and I wanted something more. So I'm reading this recipe and I'm thinking, well, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it this way and that way. And You know, they've only got one peach. We had the peach, the coconut peach bok choy dish. It is delicious. But I said to myself, well, this is not good enough. So I went to my farmer's market and I bought plenty of peaches. And I'm going to cook that dish again with my farmer's market fresh, ripe peaches. And I'm going to do things my way because I was very dissatisfied with a peach that was lovely, but wasn't ripe. And I didn't feel there was enough peach flavor in there. And that's always my problem with recipes is I generally don't have all the ingredients. So I'm always punting. My daughter once said to me, Mom, how am I ever going to learn to cook when you don't follow the recipe? I said, well, you got to follow your gut. Put in what the recipe may suggest or the amount of it that you have, and then you start tasting, and you just use what you have and put it in there until it tastes good. you got to develop your own. you got to decide what feels good and tastes good to you. That's what I want you to do. You can use the recipe as a basic foundation. So you have an idea of how, what ingredients are they using to make this sauce, this dessert, this main dish? How are they coming up with this? But don't confine yourself to the exact measurements and Deny your own originality unless that feels good to you. If it feels good to you to follow the recipe to the letter, then perhaps the gift that you have brought to share would be an extreme amount of orderliness. You're very good at creating step one, step two, step three. And measuring out specific quantities. You're very good at doing specific things. That's fine. That will help other people who are chaotic find their way. Honor that gift. But if you are feeling anxious or upset when you do that, honor that feeling. Allow yourself to express beyond whatever box you learned in. So we learn in a box that's our foundation. We need that. And put the box on the ground and step on it. Allow it to raise you higher. Learn the next box of information until you are actually the one who feels like the creator. Look at this. I'm developing my own style, my own way of doing and being. And then you know you're flowing and you're free and you truly are successful. Okay, everybody. So I want enormous success from each one of you because I know that you are. I am here to help love and support you. 
not ever to shame or to blame any of you, but to help you move out from whatever black cloud you may have found yourself caught beneath. If you want to contact me, it's Marcia, M-A-R-C-I-A, at Marcia Martin, the Heart Healer. And you just tell me you, you want to talk to me. You need a chance to uh, explore what's going on in your life. Also, there is a class for as many different situations as <laughs> I could think of at the moment. I'm working on the having a healthy relationship with money class. That will be coming up. The other thing that we're going to start doing is becoming more of a community. So we will, there will be a paid for option. This call will stay free, but then I will offer other things that we can do as a group. So it will be very reasonable. I understand that private counseling coaching is not necessarily affordable for everyone. I get it. And Honestly, my prices are going up. They've been pretty low for a long time, and my coach is telling me, time to change that. So if you are a current client, don't worry, that does not change. Those of you coming on expect to pay more or to join the group because we now have an alternative. The other thing, People have said to me, I really appreciate you doing these Wednesday calls, and I would like to support you. You will notice on the question and answer um, page that pops up on this recording, there is now a PayPal link. If you feel so inclined and you want to donate because you've gotten something out of this call, thank you so much. It is PayPal, my PayPal me button, at MM Heart Healer. So thank you for all those who can donate. If you are not in a position to do so, send your love. It is all received gratefully. All right, everyone. Again, to your success, to our success. I'm sending you all my love.